Hi, and welcome again to YCP Chemistry Labs, your College of Pennsylvania's YouTube channel to get you ready for lab each and every week. Today we're here to talk about the General Chemistry 1 experiment, Empirical Formula Determination. This week we're ready to find the empirical formula of two different ionic compounds. And far from the simple density measurements and measuring of objects that we've been doing the first couple of weeks of the semester, we're ready to do some real hands-on exciting chemistry today. So I hope you're excited and ready to go. Now, with that new chemistry comes some new equipment and some safety concerns. Let's walk through those right away at the, st at the top of the pre-lab uh, video. So some new equipment that we're going to see are the use of a Bunsen burner to heat up and promote one of our reactions today and a special crucible to contain that reaction that we conduct and then crucible tongs to handle that crucible when it's very, very hot. So here's an example of the crucible, this small porcelain object that I have in my hand. It's quite tiny and rather delicate, although it can withstand high, high temperatures, direct flame from our Bunsen burner. And I'll show you in a second how we're going to set it up. There are a couple of ways to handle the crucible with the crucible tongs. The crucible tongs look on the one hand like any, other, any old pair of tongs, but they do have this opening in the middle here which comes in handy for our work today. We can grab the crucible two different ways. By its edge, as you see me do right here. We can also use the tongs to pinch the lid of the crucible. Or you can lay open the crucible tongs and slightly pinch. This requires a couple of hands. And now you're resting the crucible in that opening of the tongs. The jeopardy of doing this though is if you squeeze too hard, you might pop the crucible up. Although most of ours are small enough that they stay, even with the tongs pinched completely shut, the crucible nests very nicely into that opening. So this is the crucible and the crucible tongs. This other porcelain piece that I have on my bench today is an evaporating dish. We'll use this in the first part of our experiment. Please do not try to pick it up this way. It will not rest as easily. If you have a sure set of hands, you might be able to manage it this way. A better way to handle the evaporating dish is from the side with the crucible tongs. Now both of these will be hot when you need to handle them and so it might be a good idea to have a hot hands. Just a simple rubber piece that would insulate your hand underneath and it can even rest on this. That's the very purpose of the hot hands is to protect your hand. So you can walk from the oven where we store both the crucibles and the evaporating dishes to your workbench area like this, holding the evaporating dish or the crucible on top of your hot hands. When it comes to setting up your equipment, some of the other pieces that you'll use today are an iron ring on a ring stand and a clay triangle. The crucible rests in the iron ring. So once things are cool, you might want to practice getting the crucible in and out of the iron ring with either method of pinching there or carefully squeezing. Notice that I'm going to support so that if anything were to drop, it would fall right onto my hot hands. This is a pretty safe and secure method for moving your crucible in and out of the clay triangle. And then the lid would be placed on top as well. And the lid needs to be ajar when we're using the crucible, just like the lid on a pot. Uh, you don't often put the pot securely on if you're going to be boiling the contents of the, uh, of the uh, pot. Okay. All right, if you break your crucible, it is not the end of the world, so to speak. We do have extras, and just please ask your instructor for a new one. You'll also be using the Bunsen burner today in the lab. So when you set up your Bunsen burner, please give some thought to how high your iron ring is. This is probably a little bit too high right now, so I'll simply adjust the screw, the securing screw on the side, and uh, bring the uh, iron ring up or down. The other part of the Bunsen burner will be tuning it um, using the shaft, which you can turn. 
This lets more or less air in to mix with the natural gas that we're burning. We're going to look for a blue flame, a nice hot blue flame that has an inner cone. Uh, your Bunsen burner should probably have an outer cone like this, but a well-defined blue cone on the inside. This is the hottest point of the Bunsen burner flame, the tip of that inner blue cone. The bottom is what adjusts how much gas you let in. You can get a very hot flame with not a lot of gas when you combine uh, the oxygen in the correct ratio with the natural gas. So make sure you're familiar.